4 to 11. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there's given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit. And he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Dear people of God, this morning we consider those exceptional gifts of the Spirit, things like healing and tongues and special miracles. Do you know the early church was filled with struggles? There were struggles of various kinds that we read about. There were racial tensions, differences between Jew and Gentile background and people of various cultural backgrounds and from different races being brought into the church and they all had their own way and background, their way of thinking and doing things and and they brought some of that culture with them and that put tremendous struggle into the early church in order to accept each other as one body and united in Christian love. And in addition to that, there were divisions on spiritual gifts. We see that especially in the book of Corinthians. There were some who thought some gifts were more important than others, and there were some who wanted to see kind of a hierarchy in the church. Some felt that they belonged more centrally than others within that body. You know, many of those struggles are similar today. We live in a world of racial tension and it happens repeatedly on the news that we see the struggle of different racial backgrounds. Police officers are in the forefront of that conflict and struggle as there have been incidences where people who were unarmed were shot. And there's a reaction, there's obviously an outcry, and then there's tension that escalates. And on both sides, people feel threatened. And it's a time of anguish, heartache, and hurt. The church also has its struggles today. In some places, there are racial tensions in churches, and we need to be reminded, as we are this morning, of those racial struggles and that there needs to be reconciliation through the Holy Spirit and there has to be a oneness and acceptance of each other in genuine love. And within the church, there still are many, many examples of people that have very different views of the gift of the Holy Spirit and the spiritual outpourings. Some of these stories are quite sensational. Todd Bentley, for example, is a very colorful evangelist, uh, and a very controversial figure. Leads revival ceremony services and claims to have the gift of healing, but many of his services, others who observe them say are rather violent. At times he hits people, kicks people, claiming that the Holy Spirit is telling him to do that and that this is a way of of healing The Pentecostal church has distantiated itself from Todd Bentley and doesn't really want to associate with him, though he is of Pentecostal background. And that's just one example of many throughout history. Um, You can name them. Many of them have been on television and they've had big followings and created tremendous controversy. 
And sometimes within the Christian church, people have looked at the charismatic wing of the church and said, are we missing something there? So this morning we look at those exceptional gifts in the early church and and what the message is for us today. But in the early church, there's clear biblical testimony that special gifts were present. Pentecost, an amazing speaking in tongues. People from every tribe and language hearing something that was spoken as if it was spoken in their own language and touching their heart as they're given special ability by the Holy Spirit to understand what was being spoken in tongues. And after Jesus went to heaven, special gifts of healing were placed on the New Testament church. And there are examples that are recorded in the Gospels of the apostles having that gift of healing and being able to touch people and make them better and even people being brought back from the dead. And of course, that raises the question, what is the role of tongues? What is the role of healing? What is the role of miracles? Not only in the church then, but in the church today. And to put that into perspective, we need to hear the testimony of Paul and the commentary that he himself gives to put the spiritual gifts into perspective. The Apostle Paul says that when it comes to speaking in tongues, well, he thanks God that he's been given that gift. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. But in the church, I would rather speak five intelligible words to instruct, to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. In other words, the Apostle Paul is not taking the exceptional gift of speaking in tongues and saying, this sets me apart from everyone else, or it sets a certain class of believers apart from everyone else, and if you don't speak in tongues, well, then you're missing the highest calling, the highest spiritual gifts. Well, the Apostle Paul really takes that speaking in tongues and makes it, in essence, of insignificance or less significance, of more minor significance, in the fellowship of the believers. What the Apostle Paul is saying here in 1 Corinthians 14 is really in line with 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 to 4, which is really a a powerful commentary on spiritual gifts. The Apostle Paul says, If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. In other words, the Apostle Paul says, if I have that special gift of speaking in tongues, tongues of angels or of men, that really is referring to the Greek word of glossolalia, the speaking in tongues. If I I have that exceptional gift, but I'm missing love, I'm empty. The sound is meaningless. He goes on. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge. There's another one of the spiritual gifts that we saw, the gift of prophecy. Or if I have the gift of faith. And in fact, I have that faith to such an extent that I can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. Remember the saying, if you have faith like a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, get up and be be moved into the sea. And the Apostle Paul says, if I have the extreme illustration of that, if if I have the incredible gift of prophecy and a marvelous gift of faith, but if I'm not using those gifts in genuine love to build the church, then those two gifts are meaningless as well. That's three of the spiritual gifts. He goes on, two more. If I give all I possess to the poor, that's charity. Charity. He's basically saying, if I write a check for the total wealth of of my estate and I put it in the offering plate, I give it to charity. But if I don't have love, it's a meaningless gesture. If I give over my body to hardship that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. You probably recall that some of the former translations said, if I give my body to the flames, that's martyrdom. 
The Apostle Paul is saying, if I give all of my possessions away and if I take my, my body and I surrender it in martyrdom and I do all of that, but if I don't have love, it's nothing. So he, he's listed all of these things, tongues, prophecy, faith, charity, and martyrdom. And he says, I can have that whole package I can have all of those spiritual gifts and describe them as powerfully and as as over the top as you can if I'm not living for Jesus in love. I'm nothing. What is that love? That love that's essential for the spiritual gifts is modeled on Christ's love itself. A love that is self-sacrificing. A love that's, that's willing to go to the cross that others may live. That love that Jesus demonstrates, that love that Jesus demonstrated for you and for me was not, first of all, the exceptional divine gifts and all of that. But when it comes right down to it, the, the real true demonstration of the love of Christ is that he surrendered himself to death to pay the price for us. So as we consider these spiritual gifts this morning, and we're reminded to employ all of these spiritual gifts in Christian love today, the the foundation is truly a self-sacrificing, a putting God and others first kind of love. No, we don't have to have to go through our Christian walk expecting that if our faith was truly strong enough, if we were a bit better as Christians, if we were truly in tune with God and the Holy Spirit, then we would be able to all speak in tongues and understand each other and we would all be able to to do miraculous signs and we would be able to take the dead and raise them up again. God did exceptional things in the early church as he demonstrated the power of the kingdom of God. Not to say that God can't do that today, Not to say that God doesn't do that today because exceptional gifts are by exception still displayed by God today. I don't think we need to doubt that. But our focus, our striving, our goal, our main focus together as the body of Jesus Christ is not to strive for the exceptional but to accept the foundational, the mandate of love. And and that's a mandate that's for every single one of us. That's the Spirit's calling to each one of us. Use our spiritual gifts, whatever they are, and how God has given them. Use them, building on that foundation of love, to build the church of Jesus Christ and to be a fellowship of believers and to worship together and to work together. And if God decides in his wisdom, in exceptional times and in exceptional ways to do miraculous things in and through us, well, then praise be to God. And to God be the glory. But that's not where we start. Our purpose and our focus with the spiritual gifts and recognizing our spiritual gifts is not to look for the exception but to follow the rule, the rule of Christian love. And so God calls us to be faithful together, to worship together, to use our gifts together, to build the community together. And if God decides to go an extra step, and if God decides that circumstances and situations warrant exceptions, well, that's for God to do but it's for us to receive the mandate to build the church and advance the kingdom of God, accepting God's guidance and leadership in Christian love.
Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you that you have given the mandate of love that binds your church together. Love that overcomes such barriers and obstacles. Love that overcomes racial tensions. Father, we pray for healing of the nations and healing of racial tensions of all kinds. Father, we pray for those who in various ways and their families that have found themselves victimized. We pray for those who grieve what appears to be the unjust taking of the lives of so many. We pray for all who live in fear. We pray for all who live haunted by the hurting memories of the past. And we pray that you will bring peace. Father, we pray that you will bring peace between nations and between races and between tribes. We pray that you will bring peace between continents, that you will bring peace between peoples of different color, that you will bring peace between peacekeepers and general populations. Father, we pray for your healing, reconciling love. And as a church, we pray, O oh Lord our God, may that peace begin with us. May we set aside envy and enmity, anger and hatred. May we humble ourselves, Father, in your presence and build on that foundation of love that Jesus so eminently demonstrated through his death on the cross. May we follow the Apostle Paul and other disciples and evangelists from the attitude of saying we must become less so that Christ may become more. And so we pray, O oh Lord our God, use each one of us and give us each your spiritual gifts for the good of your church and kingdom. In Jesus we pray, amen.